like a bun arrow. <laughs> yeah. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Now, a while ago, I made a sanding bow. I made this one with a, with a good friend of mine and had a great time doing it. I, I use this thing all the time, especially when making handles and, and totes and things like that. Anytime there's a compound curve, this is fantastic. And now that I've gotten into turning, I'm using this quite a bit. Now, a friend of mine over at Pale Dog Toolworks, which if you haven't seen his channel, you've got to check it out. He is uh, absolutely phenomenal making videos, does a lot of tool restorations and some interesting things like that. He made this one and sent it to me, and it's out of a plastic piece of Lexan. And he just put out a video on making this one, a really simple, quick jig. It probably only took him like five minutes once he had the jig done. Um, so definitely go check out that video. But I thought, you know, I have this one that's fat and a little bit shorter. And this one that's longer but very thin, but I really want something that's longer than this one, but between the diff two in distance. So I went out and got this belt. It's a 24 inch belt, um, and I'm going to be working with this. So it's 120 grit, and I'm gonna make them about an inch and a quarter wide. So let's actually dive into it and uh, look at what we have to do to make another bow sander. Now here on my original one, basically all it is is they're end caps and a bow. And this bow is made out of white oak, and I steam bent it into place and kind of held that angle. I'm not so happy on that steam bending. I'd actually rather have something that I have to bend into place every time and put a little bit of, stent, a little bit of pressure into it. So today we're gonna to be making um, this bow out of a piece of hickory. This is actually a scrap of hickory that I arrived at when making the spring for my, for my lathe. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave a link to that as well. And then I'm going to be making these end caps out of a piece of box elder, a very easy wood to work, um, a bit softer, and uh, should work fairly well for this. So let's first off start by making the bow. So here's the piece of hickory I want to use, and I have a flat smooth side here, but this side is rough sawn from a chainsaw. And I need to actually take this down into a piece that's an inch and a quarter wide by an eighth inch thick by however long I need it to be. Now I don't know exactly how long I want it to be right now, so I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna make it about three quarters of an inch longer. Just draw a random line there. I'm gonna cut this to length, then I'm gonna smooth out this face and get a nice reference face to go down, and then I'm gonna rip this down to an eighth inch thick and then make it into a final piece. So we're gonna to have to make three cuts on here. Cut number one, cut number two to thickness, cut number three to width. So, let's dive in. For cut number one, you can notice that I haven't done any marking on here other than that mark I just drew. I'm not gonna be writing anything out. I'm just gonna put the saw on that line and I don't really care if I'm a quarter inch off one way or the other. And I'm gonna cut it. Establish my line across. And go to town. Ta-da! I really don't care if that's square or plum. I'm gonna be trimming it up in the future. I just need to be roughly that long. Now let's chalk this up and plane that down. So first thing I do is put this in here in the end vise. If it's a little longer piece, I'm just gonna use the planing stop, but a small piece like this, and I actually wanted to do a bit of movement on it, I like to put it in the vise. And here I have my reference face that I plane to, but I'm only gonna be using about an eighth inch of that. Uh, so I really don't care if this reference face ends up being square to this face, because with just an eighth inch edge on here, it's really not gonna make any difference one way or the other. So basically all I need to do is make this nice, flat, and true. So I'm gonna come here with a scrub plane, and just go with the grain from one end to the other. And I wanna cut down through all of these rough marks, and each time I go across, I'm just looking for that ridge that I missed last time. And clean that up. Now that I've gotten rid of most of the waste, I'm going to come in with a fairly heavy set number four and a half. And clean out all the ridges left from the scrub plane. And the last thing I'm going to do is come in with a finely set number five. And plane it down until I get a curl from one end to the other. So that I know that it's nice and flat. Because right now I'm hitting at this end, skipping the middle. Ooh, there's a shaving going all the way across now. Just like that. So, so shaving from one end to the other in both spots. So I know that this is pretty darn flat. Do I need it to be any more flat than that? No. I'm actually going to be bending this out of flat, so that's perfectly fine. 
Basically, this is going to be the width of the sander. So my first one was one inch wide. The one I got from Pale Dog is an inch and a half, and I want to make this one an inch and a quarter. So basically all I've done is set up a marking gauge, and then I'll draw a line from one end to the other, and then down one end. In this case, I'll probably put it on both ends, because I'm going to probably cut from both ends towards the middle. Once I have that line, we can then rip this down. So next thing I'm going to do is grab a saw with some rip teeth, and I have an entire video on how to start a saw. And it's very important, especially with hickory. This stuff is very hard. To get that first cut can sometimes be difficult. So I'm just going to follow that line right on down. Now, I know that this was very daunting when I first got started in woodworking. It was very hard to follow a line all the way down without it veering. And I just have to say, practice will eventually get you into what you want to do. But basically, you want to be thinking about it. Your saw should be in line with your hand, should be in line with your arm, should be in line with your elbow. And every movement should be perfectly in line with that. So if you're cutting along, you want to be thinking about this whole train moving together. And if you find when you come all the way back that your elbow kinks back at an angle that is off the angle of the saw, then your saw is going to be doing something funky when you push forward. So be thinking about your arm being completely in line as you saw. Next, I'm just going to give it a few quick passes to smooth out this side so that I can put a mark on it. I don't really care about being flat, square, or true, because I'm going to rip it down to an eighth inch wide. just want to get a nice curl from one end to the other. So now we have this all planed down to width. Uh, we are an inch and a quarter wide. And the next thing I want to do is rip this down to a thickness. Now, what I want to do is pick a... Uh, this will be my grooving knife that I'll be using for putting the groove in the end caps. So what I want is I want to make a piece of wood that will fit into this groove. So I want to make it that it is this thick. So I'm going to take my marking gauge and I'll set it down, put this on here, and then set my marking gauge at the thickness of this. Now I'm actually going to make it a little bit thicker than this so that I can plane it down and bring it right up tight to it. So once I have that measurement on there, then I can put this on. And then it's right back and ripping. The exact same thing we did before. Just making sure I stay away from this line because I can always plane it back. I can't always add more material onto the line. So let's run around this and go cut it and I'll come back. So second verse, same as the first. Saw on line. Keep it back just a hair from the line so I can plane back to it. And this is usually the point that a lot of people say, dude, get a table saw. And I say, why? Yeah, a table saw might be faster, maybe. But I can tell you, this is a lot more fun. Occasionally I'll flip around just to make sure I'm following on both sides of the line. And my tendency is actually to move away from the line just because of being careful. Yeah. Testing. So now we've ripped down this stick and we need to clean it up and get it ready for the actual work we need to do. Now basically all I want to do right now is I want to smooth it out and get it down to that line that I drew. Once it's down to that line, then we're going to let it sit aside until we make the end caps for it. So um, there are a couple of different ways you can actually do a small piece like this. I just have an end stop here that I put down slightly below the edge. Um, and this particular one's made of aluminum, uh, so that way I'm not going to be ruining my blade if I hit it. Or I could make it out of wood. Another thing you could use is double-sided tape. I've used that quite a bit, especially if, you're, if you have problems of the stick sliding off one side or the other side of the stop. Um, the double-sided double tape works really well. Uh, but I've, I've kind of gotten, gotten, like, gotten used to working with a stop, so I want to start by taking light passes, because I can always take more if it's too fat but I can't take less if it gets too thin. And I love getting these hickory curls that are fluffy. 
And then I occasionally stop, check my line, and see where I still need to carve and where I don't. And there, I'm down to my line, and I don't want to go any farther until I make the end caps. So let's start working on the end caps to size this out. So now that we have our bow done, I want to go about making the end caps. And these are the little pieces that basically protect the paper, because if I were just to have this hardened piece of wood, eventually it would break through the belt. So these little end caps are fairly important, but what I want to do is make both of them at the same time. So here you can see how I used to have these together and I cut them apart. I'm going to be doing basically the exact same thing out of this, except for I want to make them out like this. So the first thing I need to do is cut this to length. Now, if I'm going to make it if I'm going to make it inch and a quarter wide, that means that these are going to need to be two and a half inches plus saw kerf. That I'll need two and a half inches worth here. Now, I'm actually going to end up going and make something like three inches because if I have more, actually I'm probably going to do like five or six inches. If I have more, I can always cut it out. That way if I have any mistake or something breaks on this, then I can go back and make another one fairly quickly. So, first thing let's do, let's cut this to a random length. I'm just going to put it in here. I'm not even going to make a mark on this. I'm not going to make any saw cuts. I'm not going to make any knife walls. I'm just going to grab my saw and I'm going to go to town and have a little bit of fun. I'm going to cut it there. That's probably somewhere around like four and a half, five inches. I love box elder. Um, box elder is one of those woods, especially for hand tools, it's so simple, it's so silky, so nice. Gives you that nice smooth grain you get with maple because, well, box elder is a maple. Um, but with hand tools, it's a beautiful, beautiful wood to work. So next thing I wanna do is run a groove in this. So I'm gonna be basically making these. I need to create this groove that the bow will then fit into. And if you remember, I chose how wide my bow would be by the thickness of the cutter that I have on hand to cut that groove. So let's set up the Stanley 55 and cut a groove. So now I have my Stanley 55 set up. I have taken off the second skate and the other fence because this one doesn't need it, it's so small. And I've set it up to cut about a half inch deep, maybe a little bit more, something around that. The fence from the cutter is about a quarter inch apart. Uh, so I'm just gonna set it up in here and I also have uh, pre-tested on another piece, so it's always wise to test your cut and make sure everything is the way you expect it to be. And I'm going to start cutting. And this, this is where the fun happens. This is what got me into hand tool woodworking. Making grooves. I don't know why, but this is just so much fun. Now, you don't have to have a 55 to do this. If you wanted to, you could do it with a chisel. Um, it's really not that difficult to do. Uh, you can do it with a 45. You can do it with a dedicated plow plane. Uh, you could even do it with a, a couple saw cuts and, uh, and chisel it out in between. There are a whole bunch of ways of making this groove, but this is just, well, it's a lot of fun. So let me go to town and make this groove. And I'm going to keep going until the depth stop bottoms out. And I know I've cut down to depth. So there is the groove and the piece we want to make. Next thing I want to do is rip this down to approximately that width and then we're going to come about and shape all of these rounds on here. So just like before, we're going to make a mark all the way around. This is something like inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something in that range. Don't really care where it is, it just looks about right. And I'm going to rip this down and then we can come in and actually shape this to what we're looking for. So I'm going to put it in my vise and let it overhang a little bit. Because it's kind of smaller, I want to practice a bit more with my uh, Japanese saw here. So I'm just going to start my cut, come back in here. Now the next step a lot of people think is, oh, let's plane this down nice and smooth, but really don't need to plane that down nice and smooth because we're going to be rounding all these edges to make a shape kind of like that. So basically I want to put this in a vise, round all these edges down, and uh, continue on. Now I could grab a chisel or a molding plane and shape it, but what I like to do is just grab the scrub plane, set the scrub plane at fairly deep cut, and then remove the bulk of the material with the scrub plane. Flip it over, do the other side. Now I'll come back in with a block plane after that's done. 
and do my shaping out with this. Uh, I could do it with a chisel, I could do it on a bunch of other ways, but I don't know why. This is just, this is a very enjoyable method for me. If I had a shaving horse, I probably would make this, make this stick a little longer to begin with. Then go over the shaving horse and shape it down, that would be enjoyable too. Um, but I'm just looking for a way that I kind of like it, and this is that way right there. Especially with this box elder, this is actually really, really easy stuff to work. Runs down nicely, get a nice smooth surface on there. And the box elder is so easy to work with that it's not even funny. So now we have the end cap and we have the bow, but they don't fit because the bow is a bit too fat. And that's by intention. I want it to be just a hair fat. I do know that the bow is a consistent thickness all the way along, but I want to take it down a little bit. So I'm going to set it back here how I had it earlier for cleaning up after the saw marks. And I'm just going to take off thin shaving after thin shaving until I get it down to a thickness that fits into that gap. So occasionally I will stop and check it. And getting really close there. Still need some more thickness on that end. Okay, so now I have it here in the middle. On this side, we're good. In the middle on this side, we're not. So I'm taking more off of this side, and it's a fairly consistent amount all the way along this edge. So what I want to do is think about, when planing, think about putting more pressure on this side than the other side. And that will usually take care of the problem. So I can come back in. Hey, there's that end, oh, almost. That side of that end. This side, I got more work to do still. So there we have it sized so that it, it wiggles in and holds in, doesn't fall off. And it'll do that on both ends. And that's the size I want. So the next thing we need to do is cut this down so that it fits the ends of these. So we'll make one cut and we'll move this over, make another cut. First thing I want to do is just use the saw to mark the actual side of it. Right there. And then what I want to do is with that mark, I'm just going to come and cut it across. <laughs> Keeping it eyeballed square, don't really care about it too much. I could put it in the bench hook and get a far closer look to it, but I don't really want to. I really like cutting this way. Personal preference though, whatever you want. Then repeat the process over. Move the stick in, mark its distance, push the stick out, and then cut that one. Okay, the next thing I want to do is round off all these edges. So I'm going to grab my bow sander from Pale Dog, and I'm just going to round the edges on this. And then I'm going to come back through and take off all these facets fairly quickly. And unfortunately, you have to have a sander from Pale Dog because you just you can't do this any other way. So if you don't have one of these, you're kind of up a, up a creek without a paddle. So yeah, I, you really couldn't use a sanding block. You couldn't use a chisel. You couldn't do it all these other ways. You have to have one of these sanders. So now we basically have our bow sander. We can put these pegs on either end and then this whole thing can bend. And that's one of the things I love about hickory is it bends very, very nicely and you can get this really great massive bend on there. Um, and whereas with my other one, I actually steam bent it into place and so it still has some give, but most of the bend is from the steam bending. I don't want to do that on this one because I want to just play with it. So I'm going to attempt to figure out how long this needs to be to fit into the belt. So to do that, I'm gonna put the belt here Put it about halfway in, I'm gonna bend it, and I'm gonna see that I am about mm, two, two and a half inches too long. So, here comes the trial and error part. I'm going to cut off approximately two inches, see how it looks, and then cut off a little bit more, approximately, and then see how it looks, and then cut off a little bit more, and approximately, see how it looks, until I get the actual measurement I need. It sounds like a lot of work, but actually it's kind of fun. So, let's dive in and uh, cut this off. Oh. 
Oh, so close, so close. Just another little bit. So I'm only gonna take off about a quarter inch here. Hey, 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 it fits. So there is the bow sander I want. And next thing I need to do is cut this belt down to the right size. So I'm just gonna use a pencil and lay out a few marks on here so that I can cut this down to the right size. Then I'm just gonna use scissors and I'm going to cut in at that line. Once I've cut in, then I'm gonna go inside and just cut along that line. So I'm just cutting on one side and not the other. That'll make it a little bit easier so I'm not wandering all over the place. Then we can reassemble the thing. So I like to bend it this way, slide it on, and slide it down in. And voila, we have a bow sander. And I really like that. And you're not gonna get this to bend as well as the Lexan without steaming. Um, and if you do wanna steam it, you can get a much greater bend in there. But the Lexan is extremely flexible, so I kinda like this uh, design. And you can make it to size any belt you want. And this then is a nice curved size so that we can vary between one inch, inch and a quarter, or inch and a half, and kind of play with what we want. We can change out the grits, and then you can always be rolling this around and working with new grit. Last thing we need to do is uh, finish it. And uh, if you know anything about me, you know what that means. Boiled in seal, paste wax. So it's just gonna be just like any other. Now with hickory and box elder, they don't have a whole lot of color that comes out. Uh, the finish just doesn't soak in as much as it does with white oak, um, or a lot of other words, woods. So I just like to apply it on, let it sit, come back, put on another coat, 15 minutes or so, let it soak in and just constantly be letting it soak in. If you see a dry spot on it, come put more on there and let it uh, let it dry in. Then after I've set for eh, 45 minutes or so, I'll come in and apply paste wax. Let that sit for about 45 minutes and then buff off the paste wax and the tool's done, ready for use. So we'll let that sit, come back a little later and we'll have a functioning tool. And voila, a bon sender. I am very happy with this, it is a lot of fun. Now, uh, this is actually a very enjoyable thing to make uh, fairly quickly. It probably only took me a little over an hour, if that. If I were to batch out and make a few different sizes at once, I could probably do them in like half hour each total. Um, and even the Lexan idea from Pale Dog, uh, this really is a, is a cool idea. So if you want to bend up some plastic, um, voila, that's uh, all you need. And uh, they, they go pretty quickly. They're, they're a lot of fun to use and I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out different sizes and seeing which one I like and then being able to flip out grits anytime and switch out the belts. Um, the belt is really nice because at any time you can actually rotate the belt around the end and then be using different spots uh, as you go. So they're, they're, they're kind of a versatile, fun little tool. Um, I'll leave a link to my original video where I made this one, uh, as well as uh, Pale Dog's video. Um, definitely go check out that and give him a subscription. His channel is absolutely awesome. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun one, and I'm looking forward to the next one as well. If uh, you do want to help out with Patreon, you may have noticed I don't have any sponsors, and that's because I really want to focus on you guys. Patreon is my main form of income. Uh, if you like to help out with Patreon or find out more about that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.